Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO, free impartial advice on all your debt. Razvan if IFL TV in association with MTK Global. Uh, happy Sunday with me. I've got Mr. Matthew Macklin. Matt, how are we doing? I'm good, mate. Yourself? Not too bad, not too bad. Uh, what is it? Lockdown day four? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. So, hey ho, what can we do? Doing anything or just kicking back and relaxing? Right. I'm thinking you're okay. You can keep doing all the interviews on Zoom. I bet you've got them lined up one after the other. <laughs> like I said to you off camera, you've got no other choice but to get people just lined up. And and in fact, no one can say no to us because they're locked down and they're at home. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you pissed um, me down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, where should we start? Matt, uh, I didn't get to speak to you last week uh, post Usyk Chizora. Uh, you was there. We saw your scorecard. We saw your fight and how you assessed the fight. Um, I don't really want to go into the scorecards and how people thought the fight went. I think everyone unanimously said that Usyk did win the fight. And that's at the end of the day, that, that's what matters. But we had an opportunity to see Usyk. We've seen him here in the UK with Tony Belly at Cruiserweight. First time he's fought here as a heavyweight. How do you assess him and see him as a future heavyweight? I mean, it's a funny one because he's obviously a very different... Chisora is a very different fighter to Tony Bellew. Is in, you know, Tony elected to box on the back foot and, and try and wrong foot Usyk and surprise him with his tactics and made Usyk come forward and reach for him and try to counter count him with sharp counters, which are clever tactics. Um, the only thing... And I, I said this to Tony, when I fought Sergio Martinez, I tried to do something similar. The thing with that is, you're fighting the other guy's fight. It's not how really I want to fight. I had no choice but to do those tactics. So they would just gone forward. It would chewed me up. But to try and box him, even though I wrong-footed him and was executing it well for a while, it was, it was taking more out of me than it was him because it's his way of fighting. A bit like Tony with Usyk. Tony really liked to stand there and go to war and crash bang and fire shots and off the jab, of course. But, you know, he likes to fight in a certain rhythm. So to stand back and faint and move his head and be patient and keep changing the angle, the concentration <laughs> taken to box with such discipline, you know, it's very, it fatigues you quite quickly. It drains your battery. You know, if you go out there and you throw 100 punches, everyone can see that takes a lot of energy. You just throw 100 punches in a round or power shots. Everyone, it's obvious that that takes a lot of energy. But when you're that focused and you've got to box with that much discipline, you're so concentrated and you're, you're reacting to things and you're fainting, that's very, that can fatigue you in a different way. And uh, I spoke, me and Tony spoke with this, you know, he knows because he's done it, obviously. So we, we, were, we were talking about it. And, you know, we've seen it with uh, Luke Campbell against um, Lomachenko. When you're in a fight like that, I think we say, you know, they might look to the, to the casual fan here it might look like there's a not, not a lot going on, but trust me, there's a lot going on, you know, because it's, it's, the, it's the setting traps with your feet, it's the fainting, it's the little steps, that sort of stuff. But Chisora had the physicality, um, the size, etc., where he was happy to take five or six just to get close to land one, or even to get close and get into a clinch and rough him up and land these short little clubbing uppercuts which he did really well and very effectively. You know, a smaller guy that's maybe a natural cruiserweight probably couldn't afford to take five or six clean shots to get in on top of Usyk because, you know, he'd be on his ass. But someone like Chisora, who's a big lump, natural heavyweight, got a good chin anyway, he can, he can, um, he could do that. He was able to take those, that, that, many, that many shots to get in. The fact was, can he do it and sustain it? And how long can he keep that going? Um, but, it was interesting because, you know, I think Usyk was a, a clear winner in a, in a hard fight. You know, he had to work every second of every round. He was under a lot of pressure. He was very uncomfortable on the, in there. But, but I thought he, he, he was a clear winner on the cards. Um, you know, who else in the heavyweight division fights like Chisora that could execute that kind of style to put him under that kind of pressure? You know... Tyson Fury, six foot nine, and he's a master boxer, and he's just probably too big for Usyk. And I don't think Usyk's style would maybe give Fury too many problems because he's not. I don't think he's, he's not going to outbox Fury. 
But I think Chisora being the aggressive heavyweight who's good at closing the distance was able to take a shot to get in and make it physical. That, that was a bit of a tough style, I think, for, for Usyk. Maybe not tactically, but phys- the physicalness, the physicality of it. Um, you know, Anthony Joshua, that's a different fight. You know, he's, he's, he's not as much of an out-and-out boxer as Fury, but he's not as aggressive as, say, Chisora. So, stars make fights, and I can't even remember the initial question. Question now. I've gone off on a tangent. <laughs> you answered the question anyway, but I'll move on to the next one, which was a lot of people were critical of Usyk's performance and said they weren't impressed with what they're seeing for him, for him to dominate the heavyweight division. But do we have to have a bit of empathy because it's his, really it's his first real fight in the heavyweight division. He's going to fill up to the weight eventually and surely he's only going to get better. Yeah, yeah. And, and the, you know, there's two people in there. You know, sometimes when someone loses, it's not what the guy that lost did badly, but, it, but it's what the, the guy who won did well or, or whatever. Or even if it's you won but you didn't, people are knocking his performance. I thought Chisora made it very difficult for Usyk in there. You know, I don't think that Usyk boxed a bad fight. I thought that Chisora fought a good fight. You know, I thought Chisora was good at closing the distance. You know, we, we see him go southpaw. We see Derek Chisora go southpaw and land the double jab. You know, he was good, wasn't he? he? He'd obviously prepared diligently for the fight, not just physically, but tactically and, and game plan and everything. And, and I thought Chisora did a really good job of making it difficult for Usyk. That said, Usyk came out on top and won the fight. So, um, I wouldn't have said Usyk's... I thought Usyk's performance was a good performance. I thought he was under a lot of pressure against the real heavyweight. He was meant to feel uncomfortable in there, but ultimately, he weathered the storm on those moments. He, got, he survived those patches quite well. His head movement, he managed to get, you know, to tuck up. But, you know, to, to move the way he did and land the combinations he did and, and to stay out of too much trouble, you know, that, that, I, I thought, he, I thought he'd, he fought a good fight. And it's his first fight being in there with an, a, a real heavyweight that's on form. Because let's face it, Chisora has been on form the last couple of years. Win or lose, whatever. He's been in good fights, hasn't he? Like, he had two. You can't say, you can't not Chisora. Dillian White had two great fights with Chisora. You know, the first one was like fight in a year. Probably could have gone either way. Second one, Chisora was ahead. Dillian caught in that left hook. Yeah. Sorry, someone was trying to call me there. Dillian caught in that left hook. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know. I think, I think Usyk stepped in there against someone in Chisora where, you know, he, he was stepping into a real fight with a real heavyweight who, uh, you know, Chaz with the spoon, that was really just t- dipping his toe in a heavyweight. You know, I, would, I wouldn't even count that one really. But Ch- Chisora's been a, a very active fighter in, in, in 50-50 fights. Um, Sorry, someone's someone's trying to get through. <laughs> I should have done it on my iPad. Um, you know, he's been in hard fights. Chisora, he, he, he's he's got he's got a good level of form uh, these last couple of years. So I think it was Usyk. That was a good fight for Usyk. I think um, I think it was a good performance. I thought he he, uh, he won well, and um, it would be interesting. I think I think Chisora, Usyk's just got to be careful. I think with 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 the style of fight. I think you know. He probably needs to grow into the heavyweight division a bit more as well. I mean, if Fury and AJ do fight twice next year, which I think that looks quite likely that could happen, then I don't, you know, does he want to fight for the vacant title or does he want to maybe just have a couple of fights against like a Chisora, maybe a Dillian White, maybe a Povetkin, these kind of fights and, and grow into the, the heavyweight division, or or does he see them? Now they're risky fights. So I want to fight for the world title, and does does Andy Joshua vacate, or does he get stripped, and does the vac- the WBO title become vacant? I don't know. It's all it's all ifs and buts and maybes, and who knows what way it'll all play out. Um, but he's certainly a welcome addition to the to the heavyweight division. And I wouldn't. Have, I, I don't think his uh, his performance against Chisora was a negative. I thought it was a positive. I think you've got to understand against someone in Derek Chisora who put him under the amount of pressure and made him put him under and was able to make him feel uncomfortable in there. But he was still, he still won well in the end. So I think, um, I didn't think it was people knocking his performance. I was like, no, nah, I, was, I was impressed with the performance. Matt, uh, 20, was it the 21st of November? was supposed to be Dylan White back in action against uh, uh, Povetkin. 
Um, and it seems like that fight is now not going to happen. Povetkin's obviously tested positive for uh, COVID-19. We wish him the best, obviously. But is it a hammer blow for Dylan? Because after that loss, this fight got announced within 10 days and, and everyone was initially saying it was too soon for Dylan. But has it done him more good than harm? It might not be the worst, might not be the worst thing in the world for Dillian actually to have the more time. You know, I know um, he wanted to get back in there. Listen, when you lose a fight, you're hurting, you're hurting, and the only thing initially that you, obviously time heals, but but other than time, the only thing that's going to make that pain go away to rectify it or to get back winning, even if it's not that person, get back winning against somebody and, and, and get back on that on, on track. So, you know, he he was his pride. He wanted to get back in 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 the. Uh, the ring against him ASAP. You know, it was a fight he was winning and he got caught with a great shot. You know, maybe he would have got caught with a great shot anyway, but, but when it did land, it was certainly, you know, against the run of play. Dillian had him down twice the round before. He looked like he was on his way to a to a win, maybe even a stoppage win. So, you know, he um, from his point of view, he just wants to get back in there and, and get back w where he was, which was, you know, on the verge of a world title shot. So, but <clears throat> the fact that it has been delayed probably isn't the worst thing in the world for Dillian because it does give him more time, you know, because it was, it was a bad knockout, wasn't it? Let's face it. Or it wasn't a brutal beating. It was one shot, but he was, he was knocked out. So, look, it's definitely not going to be the worst thing in the world. I don't think, um, frustrating for him maybe, but um, who knows, probably, maybe in six months from now, he'll be looking back and saying it was a blessing. We saw David Hay come out and said, Chisora's ready. He's got no scars, no bruises. Uh, let's make the third fight. It'll be pay-per-view as well. You both will earn a lot of money. But was it wise for him to say, no, I, I, I'd rather wait for Povetkin. I want to get that. I want to fix the wrong. Yeah, I mean, um, from a fan point of view, from a fan's point of view, I would love to see Chisora and Dillian White through. I'd love to see Dillian White against Chisora every day of the week because they are always going to give us an unbelievable fight. Their styles will just always come together and we are always going to get a great fight. You know, so from a fan's point of view, I'd love to see White Chisora 3. From Dillian's point of view, where he's at, he just wants, the, really the fight he wants is Povetkin. You know, listen, you could say in hindsight, he shouldn't have took the Povetkin fight. He was mandatory for WBC. He should have just sat on his ranking, but he's never done that. He's always stayed busy. He's always... Took risky fights, Oscar Rivas, Joseph Parker, Chisora, the second one. You know, he's never just sat there and sat on his ranking mm -hmm. as he, he he's kept busy and took these big fights and the pay-per-view fights. So they have to be real fights. Um, uh, so, look, so, yeah, Chisora White, I mean, yeah, listen, from Chisora's point of view, he, he, he lost, but he weren't. He didn't get beaten up, did he? It wasn't, it wasn't a brutal fight. He got outpointed. Um so he, he probably feels, look, I'm good to go. Uh, but from Dillian's point of view, uh, you know, he just wants to prevent Kim rematch. He, he wants to get back to where he was. He, I don't think he's in a, I don't think he's desperate to fight before Christmas. He was desperate to fight prevent Kim before Christmas. You know, that prevent Kim fights that happened, like we said a bit earlier in the interview, it's probably actually a blessing and give Dillian a bit more time. So, um, from, yeah, it's it's always points of views. It's always where, where are you coming from 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 a fan point of view. I'd love to see Chisora White from a from Chisora's point of view. Get in there, let's do the fight. You, you know, you're fit. You, you've just done twelve rounds. You're fresh. All you've got to do is have a bit of a shakeout for a few sessions, and you're you're good to go. From Dylan White's point of view, he doesn't want to do that fight. He did both hard fights the first time. He's in a position now that he's lost. Now he wants to get back in that position. So really, the fight for him is Povetkin. Uh, Matt, I know you must have seen the, Dillian, uh, the sorry, Deontay Wilder video that came out uh, during fight night last week on Saturday during Chisora and Usyk. I'm sure since then you've read and, and watched a couple of interviews, possibly in quotes. But uh, are you, what are your kind of thoughts and how have you analyzed, analyzed uh, Deontay's uh, wording in, in certain interviews? I haven't seen the whole interview from start to finish. I've seen clips and obviously I've seen chatter and comments on it. I know what I said. Um, I just think to myself, is there nobody close to him that could advise him? This talk about an absolute PR disaster, regardless of what he wants to think or whatever he's saying to himself and within his team, who has let him say these things publicly? It looks terrible for him, you know. Um, 
you know, especially, you know, when you say things publicly, they can come back to haunt you. And, you know, I think, it, you know, people put those clips together where he says, well, he said this, but now he's saying this, and he's just completely contradicting himself. It's, it looks, it's a bad look. You know, it's a bad look. And uh, it, it, it's, I think in years to come, he'll look back and cringe. I think he really will. He's, um, whoever's, a, look, again, it's back to when you're losing, you're hurting, and, and everyone deals with that differently. Um, unfortunately, he's gone into denial mode about a lot of it. I think he, he can't accept what happened and he's looking for, he's clutching at straws, looking at things to blame it on. Um, and like I say, from, from a, um, a reputation PR point of view, it's not, a, it's not a good look at all. And we know Tyson Fury is going to fight December 5th in London, um, making his kind of homecoming here in the UK. We know Andy Joshua is planning for next year, two fights. Deontay Wilder really doesn't have a lot of places to go. Uh, Andy Ruiz, maybe. I'm, I'm not really sure where he goes. But some of the things that he said, obviously, stuff like my, my water was spiked, blamed his own trainer, a long-term trainer, Mark Breeden, for that. Start talking about funerals again and making funeral arrangements and spitting on the tombs. And uh, what is going on in his mind? I, I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> I think he's lost his mind a little bit, you know, it's um, maybe he just can't deal with the fact that he got beaten the way he got beaten. You know, the, listen, I, I thought he was lucky to get the draw in the first fight against Tyson Fury by the two knockdowns. And even with the two knockdowns, I thought he was lucky to get the draw. But, you know, he, in that sense, he might, he got out boxed, but he just got beaten up in the second fight. You know, and he wants to, he should be thanking Mark Breland for stopping that fight. Mark Breland a, 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 was a great fighter, a good man, a real boxing man. And, and, you know, he stepped up and stopped the fight. He saw which way he was going. You could, he didn't take rocket science to see which way he was going. But nonetheless, someone has to make a decision. And he made that decision. And because of it, Deontay can, re can recover and, and, and live to fight another day. You know, if he'd have stayed in there, he'd have got, he might have got badly knocked out. You know, what would excuses would we be having then? You know, it's, it's just... Um, it's, 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 it's a little bit embarrassing for him, really. You know, it's not a little bit. It's really embarrassing for him. In years to come, I think he'll look back and he'll... You know, he'll, he'll massively regret it all. Matt, big news came out this week. We know there was a, a lawsuit going on in America with Canelo and, and Golden Boy Promotions and DAZN. Um, it, they made him an offer initially. He didn't accept it. But it seems like the offer that they've all agreed is for him to become a free agent, and he is now not, no longer working with Golden Boy Promotions and DAZN from the offset, it seems like. Is that a major, major hammer blow for DAZN in America now? Um, well, it is really, isn't it? In the, well, it is in the sense that, you know, they, they talk about people that can move the needle. Canelo's that guy, isn't he? The number one superstar in world boxing. Um, you know, you... you, you but look, I don't know, at the same point, at the same at the same time, you know, these, the people are in that are behind the zone. So they're not doing it for fun. They're doing it to make money. And maybe the business, maybe the contract they gave just wasn't stacking up. You know, and at some point, you can't just keep throwing good money after bad money. You know, sometimes you make a decision, you go for it, it doesn't work out. You have to cut your losses. You can't just keep losing money if it's not moving in the right direction. I mean, they're business people and they'll have looked at the stats and, you know, if, if the subscriptions were moving and it could justify the money they were losing, you know, in business you're losing, but it has to be turning around. You can't keep losing and losing more. I mean, it's losing, but you're losing less and less and less. And eventually you're breaking even, then it's turning into a profit. You know, but these aren't short-sighted people. They know they're going to lose money. They're losing millions, hundreds of millions, but mm -hmm. they're building it up to get it to a point. But I don't know that, you know, the contract with Canelo was a big contract. And maybe they just felt, look, and, and I think there was a lot of problems, wasn't there? There's problems with Canelo and Golden Boy. There's problems about quality control of the opponents. You know, really they wanted the Golovkin trilogy, which probably would do big subscriptions. But now they're getting these mandatories of guys they've never heard of. I mean, we're, we're, we're in the boxing hardcore. And some of the names you're hearing, I'd barely heard of, you know. So Joe Public, who's thinking, will I buy the zone and that, isn't probably going to buy it. For that model, well, he's not going to buy it. So, 
for them to justify the money, they obviously got to a point where they thought, we can't justify the money for this. And you know what, as well? I mean, we're, on, we're just observers. We're in the boxing industry, but we're still, we don't know the intricate details of, of what's gone on there. But So we're all watching it. And what a messy situation, man. What a messy situation. And I probably just thought, this is no good for anybody. It's only ending in court. Let's just go our separate ways. It was a bad deal. Let's just put it down to a bad experience and never make this mistake again. And let's just, and I'd imagine they're going to tighten things up now at the zone. I think whatever deals they do now, there'll be, there'll be a lot more um, conditions. You know, I think there'll, there'll be tighter contracts. You know, there's probably too much uh, room for reading between the lines. You, you don't read between the lines. Have it written down, you know, stipulate. You've got to have it tight because, you know, <laughs> we can all read things differently. And um, I don't know, you know, you've got to, um, look, Golovkin, Golovkin's a, Golovkin's a big name. But he's at the end of the road. You know, Golovkin's the same age as me. <laughs> I feel old, believe me. So, you know, he, he, he was not that old when I fought him. That was like that was seven years ago. So, you know, Golovkin, you know, he's 38 now. He's, you know, that, 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 he's been busy. He's been busy that these last sort of 10 years, he's been an active fighter. He's had hard fights and he's, not, he's nowhere near the fighter he was. I don't think he was anywhere near the fighter he was when he fought Canelo the first time. But, He's at a point now where he's, um, I don't think he's got loads left. And, you know, they're going to pay him millions and millions and millions to box Joe Bloggs. You know, obviously the Canelo trilogy was the fight that would, you know, move the needle, as they say. They're not going to get that now. I don't know. They have to look, I think the zone are going to have to look at their, their, their business model. I know there's a lot of talk in America about pay-per-view and, and it's expensive. And I know Oscar and Eddie went on a run and, and said pay per view's dead in America. I spoke to Leonard Della the uh, end of last week, just the day before Tank's fight against Leo Santa Cruz. And, and Leonard was saying to me that we're trying to create a model where there's unlimited earnings or unlimited capacity for fighters to earn money. So is Canelo, with the Canelo situation, with him not having that pay-per-view kind of percentage with Dizel, because they don't do pay-per-view at all, did that, init- did that eventually come to haunt Dizel back, who were constantly saying pay-per-view's dead, pay-per-view's dead? Um, look, you know, from I mean, what Leonard's saying there, there's, there's a limit, but I don't know if, you, if your limit's 30 million a fight, what were you going to generate pay per views anyway? Like, if you're Tank or whoever, well, how many buys you're doing 200,000? You ain't generate, you ain't getting 30 million or doing 200,000 buys, maybe doing a million buys every fight, you know. Do, do you know what I mean? It's like, it's like anything, do you want to take the risk or do you want the guarantee? You know, it's, it's nice to know as a fighter, well, I've I'm getting X amount. Or you say, listen, I'm happy to get five million a fight and you get guaranteed eight million a fight. You're happy. You know, I'm happy then. If they if I then find out that they've got made 10 million, or, or I could have made 10 million if it had gone pay-per-view, all right, well, I'll, I'll bear that in mind. And maybe the next time I do a deal, I'll want to do, I'll, I'll, I'll change it and I'll think, now nah, I'll take the risk or maybe we, we go, I'll get a small guarantee, but I get an upside or, or whatever. You can structure the deal differently but and it depends what you know so everyone's different some people are risk takers some people think no i want to roll the dice if it makes big i want to i want to uh i want to i want to earn big and some people aren't so much risk takers and they're just like no I'm a, you know what i'm a fighter i'm training hard i don't want to stress i just want to know what i'm getting everyone's different you know um look the, the, the thing with the zone is look i suppose television is going the streaming way you know netflix I, I never watch Sky movies now. It's always Netflix, you know. So it's it's going that way, isn't it? You know, it, the streaming, the sport will follow. Sports the same, you know. Eventually, eventually, Sky Sports and HBO, you know, they're falling. You know, it's just like terrestrial TV. When Sky Sports came in, I think late eighties, early nineties, they had pots of money. They were just throwing money, getting into this to get into the the sports space that was, you know, at that time, uh, sewn up with ITV or whoever. So, you know, but things change. Things things change. And, you know, I think the streaming um, is probably inevitably the way it's going to go. But are we there yet? Probably not yet. How long will we be there? Is it going to be two years, five years? You know, how much money are they prepared to lose each year till that flip changes? I don't know the answer to these questions. But I know, um, but I do, you know, I know these people aren't stupid people. And I know these people don't like losing money. They don't mind losing money to see where it's going, 
but they're not going to keep losing money. So I don't, I don't, I don't know where, where it's at. I don't know if they're happy with the progress they've made, but obviously they haven't continued the deal with Canelo. They haven't gone to, the, you know, maybe they just thought they couldn't win in court. Maybe the, the contract was a shit contract. I don't, probably was, but um, ultimately, you know, the, the, they're not just going to keep losing money. So I don't know. I don't, I don't, the, 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 I mean, the, the basic answer is I don't know. Um, we're just surmising, aren't we, and guessing. But uh, look, I think from Canelo's point of view, he's where's he now? He's he's probably he probably feels he can make. I don't know. There must have been there must have been a lot of arguments there over the opponents, and maybe just relationships just broke down that badly, and there's probably that much negative energy between all the parties that in the end they just thought, you know what, we no one's moving on here because let's face it, none of them none of them need money. So if their if their pride or they got in the way, or they they were too resentful of each other. It's just it's just not going to work, is it? So they probably just thought, look, we all need to just go separate ways here. But um, you know, from Canelo's point of view, if he if he drops down, if he, if he signs with Showtime, for example, and, and does pay per view, he's going to do all right, isn't he? He's Canelo. You know, if Canelo fights good fighters. People are going to buy the fights. But uh, but what I will say is, you know, if he's not getting a guaranteed thirty million off the zone, and if he's doing pay per view, then He's gonna to need to take. He's gonna, you know, maybe he will need the Golovkin third fight or the the fights that people want to see more because him boxing someone known isn't gonna smash the pay per view market, is it? It's probably gonna bomb. So I think he's gonna. Um, the fact that he, the pay per view market is a is a fair market. It's a true reflection of what's generated. A streaming platform just guaranteeing you a massive purse. That's not really a true reflection, like because they could lose a fortune. So actually, that fight didn't generate that money. It didn't generate. You know, we see it now. It's like in boxing, you got the market, and everyone says well, it's not a real market. What that means is that you know, the pay per view market is a real market. It's a fair market because what Eddie does, for example, like the main event, Anthony Joshua owns the show. You're going to get. A, it's a split of what comes in. It's an open book, and it's a split. So if if the if the event smashes it, we all smash it. You know, if if, if it bombs, we, we all lose out. But you know, someone like the zone just guaranteeing a massive purse, they're taking all the risk. You know, they they could they're probably losing a fortune on these shows, you know, and if they get the right one and it does X amount of subscriptions, then maybe they don't lose so much and obviously their their channel is moving where it needs to go. Matt, just finally, going to end with this uh, fight week in America. Uh, I've gone under the radar a little bit. Terence Crawford, Kel Brook next Saturday. Kel posted some pictures over the weekend and, and does look in phenomenal shape. But it's it's good looking in shape. But can he last the distance? Can he go twelve rounds in that way, in that one four seven way that he struggled most his career? Uh, is this a a farewell fight? Do you, do you believe? Yeah, I do. Um, in, in one answer, yes. Um, I think it would have been a great fight a few years ago. Um, I think um, I think it would have been a great fight a few years ago. I, th- I think Brook can give him problems, and I think he can he can give him a good fight for a bit. I don't I don't think he can sustain it and beat him over twelve rounds. You know, Kel's a talented fighter. He can punch. He's tricky. Can he do it for twelve hard rounds at welterweight? You know, I don't think so. I mean. Listen, I look physically in great shape now, but let me tell you, I'm not. <laughs> when it comes, if I was to get in the ring, I'm not in great shape. You know, yeah, posing for a picture in terms of muscle mass and leanness, I'm in great shape. Probably better shape than I was when I was fighting. But not, not getting in the ring and fighting, I'm not in good shape. I'm blowing out my ass in about a minute. You know what I mean? It's, it's a different, my heart and lungs, the stamina, you know, reactions. Um, reflexes they 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 look this a father time's father time they deteriorate a gal went up to middleweight came back down struggled badly had those uh you know, there, were, there were tough losses of Golovkin one he had the, 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 the eye damage then again the Terence Crawford fight went well to a tough fight um had damaged the other eye you good. lose a couple he's, he's achieved a lot he's made a lot of money you know the tough fights the losses to come back from at that stage of your career as you get older you know, you want other things in life. As you tick boxes and win titles and make money, you become less hungry. Boxing's hard. You know, the young guys that are coming up are fresher, they're hungrier, they want it. You know, you get older, you don't. 
as much. So I don't think that uh, I think Cal will go in there and probably give it his best, and he might have some success early doors. But I think ultimately he'll get ground down. Okay, Matt, what's the plan for us today? No idea. <laughs> Same as every day. If it's, if it's dry outside, I'll go for a walk. <laughs> You're heading down to the bubble this week, I guess so. Uh, I'll probably just be down Saturday, I think. Okay. Yeah, Saturday just for the fights. But I'm looking forward to them. It's the boxing's kept us going during these lockdown periods, man. It's uh, it's given us something to really look forward to and, and get stuck into. Matthew McLean, Firefall TV. Thank you very much. Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO. Free, impartial advice on all your debt.